All right, we're going to get straight to the point. We're going to skip that little intro we usually do and just get straight to it. Um, well, first off, now that I'm holding it, um, Doze, I want to say uh, thank you very much for leaving your jerky here. Pretty good stuff. I'm still eating it. Um, fellas, we appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, we really do. It's uh, good stuff. If you don't come get your meat, we're going to gobble it up, Doze. <laughs> That, in fact, we will. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. Yeah. I'm sure that's great audio for the podcast. I'm sorry, everyone. Very appropriate, but whatever. I want to say, out of every podcast video that we've shot, this last one with K-State, the preview, I think it was the most accurate by far. Right. Literally, literally almost everything – you guys and Travis said, I mean, you can't even be more accurate. Right. I mean. Oh, yeah. Going back for the past two seasons, what Kansas State has, has done, as in time of possession, you could see it. It's especially, all gone. Especially with Travis bringing up special teams, he was right on the money with that one. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Our scores. Yeah, K-State's a, di- a disciplined team, and – how many onside kicks did we see? And, you know, obviously at the end of the game, it, it the special three. teams was huge. At least three. So might've been four. I think it was, I think there were four onside kicks. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, there was, if you count, so count the first one where, you know, say what you want. The ball hit him twice. It hit him twice. You know, I, I don't know what the rule is in NCAA when they say, the play's already been reviewed. You can't challenge a review. But he wasn't he, he wasn't challenging. They were looking at the spot of the ball, right. correct? Right. Lincoln Riley said the dude touched it twice. Correct me if I'm wrong, Emerson. Uh, no, you're, you're right. Uh, the Big 12 released a statement on Twitter saying that the referees made the right decision because – Initially, they were only looking at the spot of the ball to see if it traveled 10 yards. They didn't even look at the kicker to see if he, you know, made double contact with the ball. And I think Coach Gundy was the one that noticed it on the sideline was like, hey, we need to challenge this. And if you're challenging something that wasn't reviewed in the replay, like in this instance, uh, the challenge can stand and they can go back and look at something else, another aspect of the play. So that was absolutely the right call by the refs, and that was a, a great way of handling it. And Lincoln Riley even said so in his press conference after the game. Yeah. So you had you had that one. You had um, – what was the other onside kick? I know there was another onside kick that didn't count because Lincoln Riley called a timeout and Stoops caught it like a pass. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah, the, talk about great hands by Stoops, and I was freaking out dude, when I was they like, called that time out. I was like, "Oh shit!" I was like, "We just recovered yeah. this onside kick. We called the timeout, fucked ourselves, and then they're gonna do it again, and they're gonna get the ball back with yeah, down six, yeah. And go down the is, score. They were changing up to look field. every single kick. Yes, yes. So you really didn't know yeah. where that ball was going. I know, I know, and um. And they were creative on their onside kicks. They would fake it. They tried different kicking techniques in different spots on the field. They had two kickers on the field at multiple times. You know, they were – K-State was ready in every aspect of special teams for yeah. this game. Oh, it, oh for I figured situations. out what the, what the fourth one was. They were off sides. They went off sides, yeah. I think. But we recovered yeah, it. Right. Yeah, we that. still recovered it. So, yeah, I mean, there was technically – I think there was, like, legally – or. Three that actually counted, but there was four onside sure. kicks. I mean, we're on, we're on, we're talking about special teams right now. Let's talk about the kickoff return. Okay. Return for a touchdown. Malik okay. Knowles. So, so go ahead. Yeah. Go so ahead, Tyrese Nick. Robinson, you know, gets the unsportsmanlike conduct on him. Uh, Kansas State players all over him, shoving his pads into his face. He pushes him off. It's always the second guy. It's always the second it's guy. Always the yeah. second but, guy. Always the second guy. But Lincoln Riley was so heated, and I loved it. Because I have not seen that from Lincoln Riley. I've never seen him that pissed off. But it, it's no. just awareness type of type of football, you know? You've got to know who's back there. And if he returned he'll, one last week, he's going to do it again. And you heard me say, this is why Lincoln Riley's so pissed. 
because Malik Knowles is back there, and he took one for six last week against Oklahoma State. Yeah, that's why he's so pissed. Yeah. I think. I think. If, go ahead, Emerson. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, if you look at where like the ball was caught by the K State return by by Knowles, if that if that penalty hadn't have happened, it would have been in the back of the end zone, and it probably wouldn't have been returnable. Right. Uh huh. So. That's a huge play for, on Tyrese Robinson. Yeah. You know. um, and it was kind of funny because you could sit there and watch Lincoln Riley just freak out and you could read his lips. I think I think I saw I think I saw fuck like nine times. Yeah. <laughs> he looked like Bob Stoops out there, you know, out there chewing some ass. Yeah. Like like he should be. Yeah. And, and side note, it is kind of cool to see non angry Bob Stoops. He looks like he's just Enjoying his time, non-stressed yeah. out Bob Stoops. They're on Fox. He's loving life. He's I making know. a crap ton of money off that tequila, and he's probably smiles and facial hair. Loving it. Smiles and facial yeah, hair. Dude. Um, he looks good. I like the beard on him. He looks good. I do too. I think I think it does look good. Getting a little gray, but I I think he looks yeah. good. Um, I think he's lost a little weight too since he's been coaching. Yeah, probably less stress. You know, healthier lifestyle. There he looks good. all around. Sure. He does. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, one one of the things we talked about um, last week was how terrible Oklahoma's offense was playing. Okay, in this game, sorry. Uh, in this game, I think the offense outperformed the defense in certain aspects. Oh, they absolutely did. They absolutely did because they scored on every single drive besides one drive. And they threw an interception. And if you think about it, now Nick and Emerson are going to start batting back and forth and having a pissing match because it's going to go back to the Nebraska interception, except we're on the other side this time. So we throw an interception deep in uh, their territory. They're on what was it, about the 10-yard line? Yeah, it was – It was might have been inside the – Inside the five, I think it's okay. inside the ten. Well, it e- was it was close. Either way, you know, Oklahoma was, like snapped the ball at like around the thirty, and then yeah, Spencer threw it, and it was like down to yeah, inside the ten. Exactly. So if you were to have a perfect interception or a preferred inter- interception, uh, that would be, I guess, what I would prefer. Yeah, I mean, I was I was content with that. It was third and seventeen. It's like give your guy a Whatever. shot to go up for it. You exactly. Know. But. But you look at you look at this game. The offense had a few expos- explosive plays. They had more explosive plays in this game than they had the other Division One teams they played. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. All combined. Yes. Um, Western Carolina doesn't count. That yeah, that doesn't count to me. They played the middle school team. That was a get your second and third screen, string guys progressed. And we're back. Uh, Emerson, offense, thoughts? Yeah, so um, with the offense, I thought Spencer Rattler obviously had a very efficient game. He had three Three, incompletions. Three incompletions. Yep, one of them being the interception that we touched on already, which is kind of, you know, best case scenario interception uh, for for a game. Uh, And I think I saw on the broadcast it was – the highest completion percentage since Baker Mayfield had a 95 percentage game. I don't know. Was that again? That had to have been against like Kansas, that game with Baker to have a 95% completion percentage. That's insane. But I, I, you know, and, and, and credit to Spencer Rattler because, you know, a lot of those times he was completing those passes in tight windows with eight men dropping into the backfield. uh, While running. You're right. Exactly. While, while rolling out, because I will say, the, the biggest weakness of the offense so far is still the offensive line. Uh, they gave up a couple sacks. Uh, they definitely uh, gave up a lot of pressures, and we saw Spencer Rattler rolling out because of that. And it took a little bit you know, longer than you would expect against a three-man r- front for the running game to kind of get going and get, for Kennedy Brooks to get hot. But I thought Spencer Rattler played really well. He was really smart with the football, and he... He was putting the he was throwing the ball with a purpose and every ball had zip on it. It was on a rope. It got where it needed to be to where for the most part only the the offensive person could catch the ball. 
And then I thought the receivers played really well. They caught the ball when, uh, you know, when it was in their catch radius. Jaden Hazelwood is probably one of the best blocking wide receivers I've seen in a while. I mean, he took out three K-State defenders in one play on that uh, touchdown to Jeremiah Hall in the fourth quarter. And I've seen I've seen Jaden Hazelwood blocking really well downfield for the entirety of the season. So uh, I thought the wide receivers played well. I thought Spencer Rattler dished it out uh, to a lot of different people on on the offense and spread the ball around well. So uh, really, the only thing left is the offensive line. So Nick, what were your thoughts? Yeah, Spencer Rattler was just slinging it. Um, he was twenty two for twenty five, uh, two touchdowns, one interception. But on a lot of those throws, he, he was even not only rolling to his right, but he was stepping backwards and throwing it, and he was getting it there. But here's the thing that I was most impressed by, and I've been saying it all year long. Get Kennedy Brooks in the ball game and run the ball. Guess what? They did it. They did it. He, was, he had 15 carries, 92 yards. He had a, a tackle for loss that was like 8 to 10 yards. Uh which would have put him pretty close to 100. But his average, what I tell you, if you give Kennedy Brooks the ball, he had six yards six yards to carry. And, so. what, and what do we say? Establish, Establish the, the run, run. And what else do we say? Call the run. Yeah, and that's, that's exactly yeah. what happened. And I was really impressed by that. And it gave him a lot more consistency. And you could tell that it helped everybody else out on that offense, especially wide receivers, especially Spencer. Um, early in the game, they were throwing screens. They they immediately got Marvin Mims involved, and I, I thought that was pretty key as well. Um, just a lot more consistent this week on offense, and that's going to be key going forward to Texas. It's going to be a huge game. It is. And you, you really saw Kennedy Brooks uh, – his effect on the defense and start to take take shape in the fourth quarter towards the end of the game. Towards the end of the game, he was breaking off, you know, nine yard runs at you know any time he got the ball, and you could tell the defense was gassed. And Kennedy Brooks, like we said, as soon as he finds his groove, because he didn't play last year, he's going to make the first man miss almost every time, and he's going to make four yard. He's going to make eight yards look like four yards. And 12 right. yards look like six yards. You know, that's what Kennedy Brooks does. So Yeah, he gets those yards after contact, and he does yeah. it really well. Um, so, really, our prediction scores, Emerson, you said 23-21, Oklahoma. Oklahoma kicks a field goal, wins it at the end, I think is what you said, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, Nick, no, does. Does had 28-21 K-State. Nick, you had 27-24 OU, and I had 26-21 OU. We were all in the ballpark. So, I mean, we were all in the ballpark. Nobody picked Oklahoma to score in the 30s. So if o- if K-State didn't return that kick return, it would have been they would have had 24 points, and I would have only been off by three points for K-State score. So that was pretty thanks, good. Thanks. Thanks, Emerson. Congratulations, Emerson. <laughs> Oh, great analysis. You're far superior than everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> defense. How'd the defense play? Um, in your opinion. You know, we it's it's been our our problem all year long, getting off the field and fourth down. And it, yeah. it almost uh, seems like yep. it doesn't it doesn't matter how far the chains are. No, it no, could be it doesn't. And 14 it or it doesn't. Could be fourth and one. It doesn't matter. And Never. there were there was a couple of uh, dropped interceptions. One by Key Lawrence, and the other one I believe was uh, Jaden Davis. And all all would have been uh, touchdown preventing mm. uh, possessions there. So. That would have been key. I think Pat Fields was pretty close to getting one. It was it, just a little out of his out of his reach, but he was there. I think it I think it hit his uh his hand, kind of in his joint there. But um, I'll, I'll talk about the first possession. Getting that turnover was key. I know. Um, 
I think it was Reggie Grimes who stripped it. Benito goes, yep, gets it inside the twenty. They said they said it was like a school record of return, like 70, 70 yard fumble return. <laughs> but like he didn't return to the house, so like it's kind of a stupid stat. But well, it is cool. I Benito mean, cool. was gassed. Oh, he, he was gassed after that. Hey, he yeah. looked good running the ball, man. No one was coming up on his backside. They kind of just got yeah, lucky. Yeah. You know, he was working it, dude. That's that Florida speed, you know. Uh, another thing, um, you know, we, we get the ball on the one-yard line, and then we end up kicking a 40-yard field goal. We got to convert. <laughs> we got to convert. We got to get that in the end zone. I think this yeah. could have been a game that we run away with, but there was – there's a lot of moments that we are just kind of beating ourselves. I do, too. And that's why, you know, we won by six. Okay? We won by six. Whatever. I was okay with that because, yeah, yeah the defense, they, they, were a little, they were a little off. But you look at the offense. They scored on every drive besides one. The defense, they had those two almost interceptions that you mm-hmm. said. They, if they would have caught it. And then that fumble. Okay? So you're you're realistically looking at almost three turnovers right there in Manhattan. First time we've had a road a true road game since 2019. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I'm gonna tell you what, guys. I am. It, the game stressed me out a little bit, but I have a lot of relief after that. I'm a little bit more confident going into the Red River Shootout playing Texas after seeing how they played. Yeah, I'd say the same thing, and it's all about getting an offensive rhythm and. We showed that for sure. Exactly. Uh, do you agree, Emerson? Yes, I do. Um, and my quick thoughts on the defense. I mean, if you go if you go and listen back to uh, Alex Grinch's post game interview, he was livid. He you you would have thought the defense gave up sixty points with his demeanor they and his attitude. Them. He they was not happy with the defensive performance. And he, he said all the things Nick alluded to. They didn't capitalize on opportunities to get off the field in third and long and fourth and long. And they didn't capitalize on opportunities to get turnovers and end drives. And, th- I mean, those are the two of the biggest things Grinch has harped on for years now at this point. So, I think the defensive line was 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 still dominant and they were still able to get pressure and Kansas State had trouble running the ball. I will say quick statistic. And we're back so, again for a second time. Emerson, what were you saying your stat? Yeah, so uh again, Oklahoma holds Kansas State to uh just at exactly 100 rushing yards so that I think that's I don't think they've given up more than 100 yards rushing in a game yet, maybe the Tulane game, I'm not for sure. But uh, they did give up 420 total total yards. So shout out to the Oklahoma defense for that 420 right there. Um, uh, and and that's Scott all I have. Thompson was back. He was. You you did say that. I said that they you were going to do that. Out. Skylar Thompson's going to play. Yeah. And I was iffy on that. S- I didn't know. Sneaky little trick. They pulled some shenanigans on us. Should have known. Chris Kleiman. We we should have known. Douche. We should have known. I I, I like him. <laughs> I do want to say, though, uh, I think it was the Deuce Vaughn show. Dude had 150 total yards. So He's a stud. He's a stud, and he's hard to find. He is, and And, to to top it all off of the defense, Skylar Thompson didn't have much room to run around back there. He did a really good job stepping up in the pocket and making – he made the throws. He made he, the throws. The yeah, throws were good. The throws were accurate uh, most of the time. He just didn't have any room to, to run run around. You know what I mean? Yeah. The the pocket would slowly start collapsing, but he would. It, it always seemed like he had a nice little funnel to step through. Yeah. Hand me that. Nick, hand me that. Was it just water. me, or did did Perry on Winfrey like? fail to really make an impact in this game like he usually does. No one thought. That's what it seems. I feel like Isaiah Thomas, obviously he had a sack. You know, Reggie Grimes had the forced fumble and Benito with the recovery. Those were, They were both playmakers today. But it just seemed like Perrion, it, he wasn't performing a, 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 up to what you would expect. I don't know. Maybe that could be to the 
because of the Jalen Redmond thing, but uh, as OU fans, we're only allowed to have one good side of the ball each game. That's true. Yep, you get a pick. You get a pick. You get a pick. Um. Okay. Well, next week's Texas guys. That'll be uh, another topic for a another episode. <laughs> I do want to say real quick with the Texas game. That is when the most physical units of the team being the offensive and defensive line, if they ever make a step in the season, it's during the Texas game. Yeah. And it means more. And, you know, that's when you really start to see people, guys come out and guys start to dominate or not, you know, and that's who separates the men from the boys. And, you know, Texas looks good this year. And, uh, I think it'll be a really interesting game. Five and zero versus four and one. They're both ranked. It'll be good. I uh, so side note to the Texas game preseason when Oklahoma was number two. I was a little intoxicated at a little gathering, a social gathering, and. I made a bet with a friend that if Texas beats Oklahoma, I will get a pro Texas Longhorns tattoo. And if Oklahoma beats Texas, my friend will get a pro Oklahoma tattoo. Pro. It can't be. It can't be a Longhorns down. It can't be a no. Turn the OU upside down. Be a no. It has to be a Texas tattoo. And it has to be at a place to where whenever he requests to see it or show it off, I have to show it off. So if I put it on my arm, if I put it on my ass, if I put it on my leg. So I'm a man of my word. And I, I'd, I'd go for the ass cheek. That's yeah, just me. I try. I try my <laughs> hardest. I really try my hardest to tell the truth all the time. Um, so, you know, I'm not a shit bag. I'm going to get a Texas tattoo if Texas wins. So, the 2021 Red River Shootout is going to be the most <clears throat> stressful game of the season for me. I How intoxicated were you when you've agreed to this bet? It doesn't matter. That's you agreed cool. to this bet with Texas having a brand new offensive it guru was head coach. Give me a break. We all thought and Oklahoma Sam was... Ellinger is gone. You, you picked Oklahoma to win the national championship. Oh my gosh, bro! Yeah, they so were did he. Two in the... We need to talk about the rankings first of all before we end this podcast because okay, let's let's talk about the rankings real fast. And we Tom wrap Foolery it up. going on in that, but. That's a bold move. That if if if, if Oklahoma, but I will say Oklahoma has won fourteen of the last twenty one. They're fourteen and seven in the last twenty one meetings over Throw the last twenty out years. The window. So, Throw it out. yeah, but um, it'll be interesting. Quick thoughts about the rankings, and we're gonna head out of here. Um, I worked all night, and I'm freaking tired. So okay, the okay, the biggest thing that stands out to me from what I saw with the rankings is that Oklahoma has remained at number six. These aren't current. And the they way. have been, these, are, these aren't current The the new ones just came out right. today. So, so number one, so number one's Alabama, obviously dying a fucking fire. Number two is Georgia. Georgia. It's Alabama and Georgia. And then, everybody else right now. Yeah. And then three is Iowa. Four is Penn state. Five is Cincinnati. They have jumped Oklahoma after they beat a very questionable Notre Dame team with very little offensive firepower coming back. And they have jumped Oklahoma now, and they are number five, and Oklahoma remains at six. And Florida is still in the top 25. They lost to Kentucky, who, yes, is 5-0, and but who have they played? And, like, Florida has got to have the most positive bias ever. They... Went up in the rankings after losing a game. Granted, yes, it was to Alabama, but they still a loss is a loss. And then they barely drop at all after losing to Kentucky. 
for the first time in 35 years. Do you want to drink it makes a big no old sense. cup of Gatorade? You no, I'm not going to drink any Gatorade. I hate Gatorade. <laughs> Powerade's way well, better. Hey, I, actually, I heard Tim Tebow's going to be the quarterback's coach, so that should bump him up at least five spots in this automatic set, set of rankings here. Automatically. Well, Emory, Emory Jones probably a better runner than Tim Tebow ever was. It's just Dan Mullen doesn't know what the hell he's doing, and he still thinks that their season – that their 2021 season hasn't started and their 2020 season ended with the SEC championship and the Cotton Bowl didn't happen, but whatever. And, and I'm just – I'm going to throw a side note, side note out again before we wrap it up, and I've said this since like week two. Nick, Michigan's going to be Ohio State. I'm slowly more <laughs> believing you as they keep winning. But we'll see because Ohio State did look good this week. So, But they, they played – who they play? They played. Hold on. I think here, it was Toledo check. or something. They played it Rutgers. Some, oh, it was Rutgers. Okay. They're Damn winning. Break. They're winning. They lost to Oregon, one possession game. Oregon's not that good either. I I told you from the beginning too that Oregon wasn't. I don't think Oregon's that good either. I cannot wait to get into the SEC and get the SEC bias that the rest of these teams do get because. I don't know. Like, I, I watched the Auburn-LSU game yesterday, and I don't think Auburn's a top 25 team. No. <laughs> like. No. No. Mississippi no. State is, had, like, jumped really high in the rankings after beating a very suspect A&M with a backup quarterback that is completely inept on offense. It's It's just like, you know, like, you can lose a game in the SEC and go up in the rankings. And it makes no sense, and I can't wait for Oklahoma to get that bias. But they probably won't until they win the SEC like five times in a row, because right, because everyone still will still say that oh, they're a Big Twelve. But and and that's the other thing too. You know, you look at some of the great defensive games that Oklahoma West Virginia last week. You know, Baylor Iowa State around thirty points each. You know, in that game, and everyone's saying, oh, well, the Big 12's offense is terrible. Look at how bad the Big Twelve is. But if that was in the SEC, they say these were dominant defensive units with big bodies that didn't allow anything to happen on the run. It's like, dude, come on, man. How dare you? How dare you? Get the SEC dick out of your mouth and... How dare you? Analyze some football. Anyway, all right, I'm done. Anyway, okay. We're going to wrap it up. That was OU versus K-State. Our thoughts about it. Wednesday. Preview Wednesday, OU Texas. OU Texas. Emerson, OU Texas. Adam, OU Texas. So, we'll see you Wednesday. Boomer. Boomer soon. Sooner. Adios. Hi, I'm Adam Murphy, director and producer of Sooner Saloon. My name's Gabe Joyner. I'm the motherfucking sound guy. And we would like to thank you for watching and want to remind you to like, comment, and subscribe if you like our videos. Go. Smash that like button. Destroy that subscribe button. You know what I'm saying? Go out there. Kill it. Cheers to that, bud. Destroy. Subscribe. Destroy the like button. <laughs>